Hello, everyone. My name is Michelle Guan. I am an associate professor of Department of Mathematical Sciences at DePaul University. In this video, I would like to introduce you to network models in financial mathematics. So, when we talk about network models, what is the first thing that comes into your mind? A very frequently used network models that we see every day is a social network. Nowadays, the social network can be built up on social medias such as Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat. So, if you consider each user as a node, then the relationship or the friendship in between these nodes are considered as edges in this network. So, I'm going to briefly discuss a couple of different types of network models. The first network model I like to introduce is a random network. So, in the random network, each node has a probability p to be connected with all the neighboring nodes. I'm going to show you very soon with a graph of the random network so that you can see clearly how random network is different from all the other network structures. So random network is a simple yet very powerful network because this one is considered as a representative as, as a more homogeneous network because each node has on average the similar number of neighbors in this network structure. And the other three network structures are more heterogeneous. By heterogeneous, we mean that each node might have a relatively different number of neighboring nodes depending on the role in the network. So some of the heterogeneous network structures we frequently see in our real life, one is small word network, where we usually observe it in the social movement groups, in anatomical connections in the brain, in network study, in the geology and the geophysics. And we also see the scale-free network, which is frequently observed in the computer networks, in airline networks, and financial payment networks. The last one we want to talk about is a core peripheral network, which will often observe it in the social networks and financial payment networks. In the next couple of slides, I would like to show you with a graph so that it's easier for you to see the difference between all these network structures. The first network structure is, as I mentioned, the random network. In the random network, each node is collected with the neighboring nodes with a probability p. For instance, we can choose p equals 0 0.10. So on average, this network is highly homogeneous, which means on average, each node have a very similar number of neighbors as the other nodes in this network. And the second network structure we'll look at is the small word network. So the small net word network starts with a ring lattice network, which means each node is connected to the closest same number of neighbors. Let's say each node is connected with the closest six neighbors. But then we rewire some of the edges. Then for instance, one node can be connected to four closest neighbors, but then at the same time, it potentially has two links that are connected to the far away nodes. So you can tell from the graph itself that the small word network has a completely different structure compared to the random network. And two more heterogeneous network structures, which means the nodes can have very different number of links depending on the role in the network. One is the scale-free network. So the scale-free network is built up in a way that we start from a couple of nodes. Whenever a new node comes in, the new node chooses to be linked to the other nodes in this way. So there is a higher probability for new node to be connected with the nodes that already has many neighbors. And the new node will be connected with the nodes with fewer neighbors with a lower probability. So you can imagine when this network is built up, the stronger nodes, which means the nodes already have more neighbors, are becoming stronger, and the nodes with less neighbors will become weaker. Therefore, in this network structures, there will be some hub nodes 
or the center nodes that have more links than other nodes. And the last type of network structure I like to introduce here is the core privy network. The core privy network, if you look at the average number of edges or links, it has some similarity with a skill-free network. However, it has its unique feature, which means in this network, there are two different layers of nodes. The first layer of node is called core node. So for the core node, they have the most links in this network structure. And another requirement is all the core nodes have to be connected with each other in the perfect core perfect network. In other words, if there are 20 nodes that are considered as core nodes in this network, they're all linked with each other. And the other layer is called the periphery nodes. So for all the periphery nodes in this network structure, they're only allowed to have links with the core nodes, but they're not linked with each other. So you can think about this in the financial world that um, each core node are the central or the most important banks in each different country, and they're kind of connected with each other. But the preferred nodes can potentially be only connected to the central banks in their own country. So there might be some local banks that they have the payment or the lending and borrowing relationship with the most important banks in their own country, but they're probably not connected with the local banks in other countries. So as I mentioned, these different types of network structures actually has an impact when we evaluate the financial risk. I'm not going to go over all the details and the modelings about the financial network, but I'd like to briefly talk about some of the results in the network models in the financial system. So the financial system can be perceived as a complex interacting system, and therefore the networks of financial institutions exhibit complex structures. You can see in the previous network models, if we consider each node as one financial institution, for instance, maybe JP Morgan Chase, as one of the core nodes in the core profit network structure, then the whole financial system can be represented by one of the network structure. And apparently, different network structures will have an important impact on how financial risk can be spread among these financial institutions. And heterogeneity in network structures, such as the highly heterogeneous network as skill-free network and core periphery network improves the overall stability of the financial system. However, it also creates a too big to fail problem during the 2008 financial crisis. The too big to fail means there are some of the important nodes, or we call it systemically important nodes in the financial system that they play the role as stabilizer to the random shock in the financial system. But at the same time, if these big banks or big financial institutions have a problem in their financial balance sheet, then they might spread over this entire risk to the system. Therefore, it's very important for us to understand how different network models will actually have impact on evaluating the financial risk. I hope you enjoyed this short video about how network models can be applied and used in evaluating the financial risk in the financial system.